Hi, welcome to Nina in the Kitchen, where today I wanted to show you how to make Irish soda bread. It's one of the easiest things you can learn, Sybil. It's, <laughs> it's just, if, if you can put together a bowl of cereal and turn your oven on, you can make Irish soda bread, I promise you. So I'm going to show you two versions. One is original Irish soda bread, and there are variations on that which I'll talk about later. And then the other one is an American version. The American versions have um, caraway seeds and raisins, and some of them have orange zest in them. They have more butter, they have egg. So it's a little richer and um, more flavorful, but both of them are great, fabulous breads to make. So let's get started. I have a white flour, in the bowl of my mixer. The only leavening that you have with soda bread is baking soda. And um, you can use also a, a mix of baking powder with the baking soda. That'll give it a little more boost. I'm using cream of tartar with the baking soda. And um, if you've never seen how soda reacts to an acid, this is baking soda and here is vinegar. And whoa, look at that. <laughs> like my little science beaker. <laughs> um, so that's basically why we mix buttermilk, very important, buttermilk rather than regular straight milk. It gives you more lift as you can see. So let's get started. I have a paddle attachment on the mixer, two tablespoons of room temperature unsalted butter. And I'm just going to blend those two things together. Next, I have two tablespoons of sugar. And this is a mixture of one and a half teaspoons of baking soda, one and a half teaspoons of cream of tartar, and one and a half teaspoons of salt, kosher salt. And that all goes in. I'm just going to turn this on just to blend it up. Next, it's just the buttermilk. Now, this is a shaggy mess, and that's exactly what you want. So I'm just going to take a little bit of flour, put it on my surface, and turn this out. Now, you don't want to knead this because you don't want to develop the gluten. All that you want to do, you do have to turn it, maybe 14 times, something like that, but just until it gets out of this shaggy stage and makes one cohesive piece. You don't want this to be smooth. This is a rustic bread and you want it to stay that way. And that's it. So now we have this nice little round. You want it to be about six inches and maybe two inches in height. So that's perfect. And you can see it's not smooth. It's kind of craggy and you want that. I'm going to make the second loaf now and that's the American style. Hi, well, I'm back to do the American version of Irish soda bread. But a couple of things I wanted to talk about. One is the flour. The flour in Europe is different than ours, and we can mimic their flour. Totally up to you. I'm not choosing to do that today because I happen not to have cake flour, but you can do three parts of American all-purpose flour and mix that with one part of cake flour. So it's a soft wheat going into a softer wheat, and that will mimic what they have in Europe. And you can use that for pasta. I wouldn't use it for pastries, but for a bread like this, it's perfect. So that's up to you. The other thing is buttermilk. I ran out of buttermilk as I was measuring for the one and a half cups that are going into this. So I thought I should talk about substitutes. You can substitute one cup of buttermilk for one cup 
of regular milk with one tablespoon of an acid in there, meaning lemon juice or white vinegar. Um, the other thing you can do is use plain yogurt or um, sour cream and just loosen it up a little bit with water to make whatever measurement you need. That's a great substitute. Um, and if you don't have any of that, you can actually just use water with some vinegar in it to give you that lift with the baking soda. I also wanted to show you how to properly measure for this. You know, when, when we buy flour and you put it away and take it out and you put it away, it's all being tamped down. So the best way to measure, whether you're doing pastries or breads, is get your cup, get your scoop, scoop it in there, and then sweep it off. And if you feel like maybe there's little holes, little pockets of air in here, you can just test that by doing this with the edge of your scoop. So that's four cups that's in there. The other things that are going in this time is caraway seeds and real Irish soda bread has never seen a caraway seed. The other thing is I have a cup of raisins, just regular raisins, um, and the addition of two more tablespoons of butter makes it a little richer. So now this is four tablespoons of unsalted softened butter and one beaten egg. Other than that, the recipe is exactly the same. I have four, um, four cups of flour in here. I'm going to put, oh, going to put the four tablespoons of butter and we'll get that worked up. This is the baking soda, sugar, and cream of tartar. We'll mix that in there. And this is now one quarter cup of, um, of sugar rather than two tablespoons that we put in the last recipe. Here goes the egg, buttermilk. I don't want to overmix. So I'm going to let my mixer do the work for me since I dirtied the bowl. Putting the caraway seeds and the raisins in there. That just needs to be worked into the dough. And that's it. Now we turn it out again. Turn it out onto a floured surface. The other thing I didn't mention that I should is that when this comes out of the oven, I'm going to use a tablespoon of butter to brush over the tops of them, not before it goes in, but afterwards. So um, that's another addition to the recipe, I guess. And same thing, you have this shaggy mess that you just wanna make sure incorporates um, all of that flour but you don't want to knead it too much. You don't want to overwork this dough. Kind of like a biscuit, like an American biscuit. And if it's a little sticky, that's okay. That looks good. So, oh, and by the way, in Ireland, this bread is called spotted dog because um, cause it's got little spots in it, I guess. So, I don't know, I'm a dog lover, so I thought that was kind of cute. Anyway, this goes on my tray. I have a sheet pan with both breads on there. And the last thing that you do before putting this into the oven is you take a sharp knife and you make a cross in it. I'll see you in about 40, 45 minutes when this is golden brown and yummy. And by the way, the oven rack is up on the top third part of the oven. Um, and the oven is set for 375. So I'll see you in about an hour. Well, here are these beautiful breads just out of the oven. And unfortunately, you can't cut into bread right away as soon as it comes out of the oven. Part of the baking process is that you let it rest. And the reason is so that the structure sets up because if you were to cut into this right away, 
what happens is all of that air that you've put into the bread will now condense as you slice your knife through it. And it's gummy and it really doesn't taste as good. So here's how you tell your bread is ready. You can tap it. This is gonna be hot. And it sounds hollow. The other thing you can do is you can test it. You want it to be about 175, 180. And this is Fahrenheit. 172, it's going up. 76, so we're there. This is ready. So I'm going to put these over to the side. I don't know where I even found this, but I, I like this for breads, this um, rack, this cooling rack that's lifted up a little off of the counter because that way there's air circulation all the way around. So what I'm going to do now is I have one tablespoon of butter that I've melted and I'm just going to brush these two loaves with that butter. I don't know which one to go for. <laughs> They're both so beautiful, very different. But I think I'll go with the, the most rustic and then work from there. Mm. Nice crumb. So you see, it is like a great big biscuit. Very nice. Let me just take a little butter. You know, bread and butter, there's just something, I mean, it's one of my favorite dishes. Mmm. <laughs> really delicious. Really, really good. Let me try the American version. Same crumb, very moist. Really a lovely bread. Mmm. <laughs> hmm. In the rustic bread, it's so simple. It's like a southern biscuit. It's light, it's got just a little touch of sweet because there were two tablespoons of sugar. The buttermilk gives it a richness. Really, really nice. The American bread is um, the richer cousin. You know, it has the egg in it, it has the, the raisins, the caraway seeds. I love those flavors in it, but I think I might like the rustic original better. One thing I wanna say, is that uh, there are no preservatives in this. So you really do want to eat as much as possible in one day, two days on the outside, but even by then it's going to go stale. And um, you can freeze this. The stale bread is delicious toast, great with a cup of tea. So um, I hope you try this. And I'll see you next time on Nina in the Kitchen. Please follow me on Facebook and of course here on YouTube ninainthekitchen.net for recipes. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. Bye.